Hey guys, David Childress from Mighty Mouse Solutions. Um, just wanted to respond to a heated topic that's come up uh, from time to time, especially by some of my uh, competition on the subject of crankcase evacuation. The big idea with some model catch cans, like this uh, three-port version here, is that um, applying a suction on the crankcase is a good idea. I could not agree more. It is a good idea, but without the aid of a mechanical vacuum pump, we really don't get we really don't get anywhere. Um, and in fact, it can cause more harm than good in some cases. So, for example, this can this claim to fame here is that because we were able to hook up this one to the uh, cold air intake piping, they were able to pull a vacuum on the crankcase. So that sounds really nice. What we would do is you have your normal PCV airflow in, you have your PCV return to your intake manifold, and then you have a, a separate clean side exit of the catch can that would go to your um, your cold air your cold air pipe. So a couple reasons why this won't work. One, uh, if your air filter is so restrictive that it has caused a significant vacuum in your cold air tubing, it would be the type of air filter you would want to replace because it's costing you horsepower. Uh, another thing is the, the, the bigger line, and this goes across with even my products I sell, the bigger uh, suction line we run to the cold air pipe, the more crankcase fumes we actually send back into the engine, which engines don't run on crankcase fumes, they run on fresh air. So we want to, in my opinion, strike a balance. Uh, this system here, um, the, the big idea is just suction, so we'll just concentrate on that for now. Uh, so what, what I can do here real quick is uh, we will show how much suction I can simulate, and uh, then we'll go ahead and do a pressure test to see if that suction is enough to, um, to, to cause an, a real vacuum on the crankcase. So um, what I'll do here is I'm going to connect, this runs through to this gauge here, which can measure airflow, and this measures crankcase vacuum, crankcase pressure. So I'm going to hook this up here. I'll make this connection here, and we'll turn on the vacuum. You'll see that we're generating four inches or so of vacuum, which is quite a bit more than you would want your cold air tube to generate. And uh, if I open the flow, all the way up, we'll eventually get around three and a half CFM. Again, like I say, if you have two and a half, three inches of vacuum in your cold air tubing, I would consider that to be a pretty poor cold air tubing. You would want to upgrade that like every other thing you upgrade on the car, through your flowing cold air tube, through your flowing air filter, because you want this number to be close to zero. You don't want a restriction in front. Let's forget that argument and move on to just maintaining vacuum in the crankcase by harnessing this vacuum. So I'm going to use this vacuum. I'm going to close this off and we're going to switch over to a pressure supply to simulate crankcase pressure. So now we're going to start adding uh, air into the system. Uh, also to note that I haven't gone over with my rig here, uh, you know, crankcase pressure pushes out dipsticks, rear main seals, front main seals, valve cover gaskets. It can get very messy in a hurry. We don't want pressure. I bench test all my stuff up to three PSI just to get a good range. That's way worse than you would ever want to put an engine through, but it's like a torture test type situation. So I'm going to run this up to three PSI. And you'll see right here, is the maximum we want to go where our airflow that this catch can is able to sustain is about six and a half CFM. Now this is a three port, so I don't want to cheat. I'm going to go ahead and open up the rear port. So this means that air is able to go into the intake manifold because this pressure here is higher than intake manifold pressure. So that knocked this number down a little bit. We're going to turn it on up to three again. Now we've jumped all the way to 8 CFM. Hey, pretty good, right? Now I'm going to apply the vacuum. Remember that same vacuum that we had before? And we'll see how much that helps it. So we lost not even half a PSI of crankcase pressure. We're still positive 
I'm going to go ahead and turn it right back up to three again. And we are still running the eight and a half, eight and three quarter CFM. So here's the big difference. So this was operating with vacuum, should have created crankcase vacuum according to the hype, but we were still pretty easily able to generate crankcase pressure. Now let me explain how that transfers over to vent atmosphere systems like I do, hybrid, vacuum, and vent atmosphere systems like the, the Gen 4 can here. So what we can do here is we can run vacuum in the can and we can, uh, instead of allow suction off of the top, which I do have a recirculating model that will allow suction, we're just going to vent to atmosphere. So no suction available, right? So the competition would like to think this is extremely bad. We will be building pressure before it can be released. So let's just see how it goes. We're going to get rid of this guy. We're going to add, this is a Gen 4 PCV can. I'm going to switch my hose out. This is a number 10 inlet. I have 6, 8, 10, 12. We can do single, we can do dual. This is just a single 10, just for example. This is my most popular model, so uh, well within the range of what uh, we are being told doesn't work. So uh, there's no vacuum on the system, so we're just going to do the same pressure test and see where we are. Remember, we were at 8.5 to 9. At, to make 3 PSI of uh, crankcase pressure, we made 8.5 to 9 CFM of airflow, uh, so that would simulate 8.5 uh, to 9 CFM of crankcase flow leaving the crankcase through that catch can before we built 3 PSI of uh, pressure. So. This can here, I rated 1,000 horsepower. We've got a number 10 single inlet, and uh, we'll go ahead and turn up the air now. There's about 3 PSI of crankcase pressure, and to achieve that kind of pressure, I'm at about 16, 16 and a quarter CFM. Vacuum applied. That was a lot of vacuum applied. 